Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Social Tips episode where we are going to review our September challenge. And my wonderful guest, and I think she's a wonderful friend too now, is Margaret Wong. Hi, Margaret. Hello. Hi. Hi, Heather. Hi, everyone. Now, Margaret is a real estate agent with Dexter Realty in the beautiful city of Vancouver. And Love the reason it. that uh, we have Margaret here is she's one of our star ninja students. And she really dives right in and tries everything. And we're just so proud of you, Margaret. And thank you for giving us the time today to be here on our Social Tips show. I am very honored and delighted to be here. Thank you. Awesome. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to review the last, um, not all 20, because Catherine and I reviewed the first seven, but we're going to start on social tip number eight and review eight to 20. And we're just going to just touch base on them. And I think it would be really nice, Margaret, if we, if we talked about the challenges with our time and trying to do everything when it comes to our social media. And the reason <laughs> I said that is because the first one we're going to start with is, of course, tip number eight. And all yeah. of these tips are meant to help you become more efficient um, and better at your social media. Catherine and I always say there is always a way to make things harder. And we're trying to make things as simple as possible so you can accomplish these uh, tips every day. And so tip number eight is to cross-pollinate with other businesses. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is Facebook actually gives you a second news feed when you create a business page on Facebook. And that's where you can only cross-pollinate as a business with other businesses. So, Margaret, tell me a little bit about your cross-pollinating. Uh, actually, it was a, a concept that I thought it was quite intimidating. I didn't know how it worked, but I really liked the video that you put together. And I copied the link and I said, Fee uh, page feed pages and the score feed yeah. and actually I did it probably about 10 30 last night and I thought ah you know what I'll just give it a try because I'm not I know I'm gonna be here and once you get there it just asks you what kind of pages do you think you'd like to follow and you know what interestingly enough because um just yesterday I met with a local artisan chocolatier he oh. makes chocolate, handmade truffle and I'm actually wanting to ask him to do some Christmas uh, chocolate gifts for my client. So I met with him and we had a lovely chat and I thought, you know what, he would be a perfect person for me to cross pollinate. And I did. And it took about all of three minutes, even on my first try. So what I thought was a challenge is now a hack. Good girl. Now, yeah. we don't always have a lot of time to do this really valuable free cross-pollinating tip. But when I do it, I'm so amazed after years and years of having a business page, the other businesses that I follow, it's just like saying, hi, it's Heather. Hi. I know. I know. And I think they appreciate the The other business owner appreciate that as well. And then, then I do... I do follow your tip in terms of not, don't just like, but write something. Write something a little bit more meaningful. Even if it's just one line or two lines, it helps them remember who you are and it helps them to drive it, like the, the activity in their pages. So it's a local business supporting each other just virtually rather than being there. Absolutely. And if you do write something, as Margaret said, you actually are dropping off your business card, not only for that business owner to see, but anyone else that's engaging with that post that they have put out. If you just click like, potentially you will just become a number because um, you get one like, two like, three like, and you don't actually get to see the name anymore. So that's a really good point, Margaret. Awesome. Yeah. So that was uh, tip number eight. Now, or actually that was tip number seven. Sorry about that. Tip number eight is every once in a while, you should share a post from your business page yep. onto your personal profile. Yep. Yep. So Margaret, tell me a little bit about that exercise. Uh, 
I actually found it that it wasn't as user friendly as I thought. I'm really glad that you mentioned that because uh, for the longest time I couldn't. And the longest time, the way I did it is the old school fashion where I actually copy and paste and read a post from the beginning. That's how I shared. <laughs> I I know it, it's it's still sharing, but it's not quite the same. Uh, so now I learned that it, you actually have to just go to sort of below the post and there's a little circle and you can pick who you want to share because I have my personal page, I have my business page, but I'm also an administrator for uh, my Toastmaster club. So I can actually share it to different pages as I like and now I know it. It is so much easier instead of doing copy and paste and re-upload the picture, I do it that and it's like done in a second. So much yeah. faster. Yeah, so it does take a little bit to figure it out because yeah. like anything on social media and especially Facebook, it's never usually easy the first time you try it. But it's just not it, as instinctive. Talk. Yeah, it's just not as instinctive and as uh, user friendly as it is. But you know what? Once you know it, it's easy. That's right. So try it from your smartphone and try it from your desktop computer as well. Yeah. Excellent. I'm glad that you're trying all these things out, Margaret. I, I am. I actually try everything in the phone. <laughs> You've been very active in the September challenge, so thank you. Okay, tip number nine was make sure that you check your notifications a few times a day. Now, quite honestly, I do not have any sound on my phone when it comes to notifications. I mean, heavens, Catherine and I have 20 different business pages. That would make us crazy. But do you have a schedule, Margaret? Uh, I do my schedule usually uh, a little bit more. I'm a combination of schedule and random. So you know, on a day where I'm just fully on the road, then I usually just do it in the morning and right before I go to bed. I just do it quickly. And a lot of time, it's not that time consuming because a lot of time the notification is, oh, somebody left your page. Well, that's great. Uh, <laughs> but when you do see somebody leave a comment, those are exciting to look forward to. And I, I, I kind of do it as a little bit of a challenge, a little bit of a game, and I look forward to it because well if somebody like it it's great but if somebody actually write a feedback and it's nice to have that conversation and it's an engaging back to that person right so you know I, I do it. It. And, and on a day where I'm not really super busy then I do it maybe three four times throughout the day yeah okay Excellent. But I do think that one point is make sure you do check those notifications because I think if you don't, Facebook doesn't think you're alive. And when you're not, then they kind of demote you. So I think having the consistency of at least checking it once a day probably will help. We have actually been in our boot camps, Margaret, and people have just checked their messages for the first time and we have had realtors that had people ask them a year ago for a marketing oh, no. evaluation. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That uh, happened more than once. Yeah. So if you're tuning in, in the September social challenge where we are sending you one social media tip a day to help you start to embrace and get better at your social media. And our guest today is Margaret Wong with Dexter Realty, who is one of our super ninjas. And you know what, Margaret, I want to say to you? Um, Catherine and I are going to Toronto to teach at the Toronto Real Estate Board, one of the largest real estate boards in North yeah, America. Sure. They're big. Yeah, they're very yeah, 54,000 members. And they asked us, can you give us any examples of your students? And you were the example that we used, Margaret. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Okay, so let's continue on with tip number 10. Now I'm not sure if my Wi-Fi is really buzzing out here, but to me it, it's very pixelated. A little bit, even on my end, but uh, it's okay, I can, we can carry on. Okay, so tip number 10 is what you want to do every once in a while, maybe every six months, is you want to send an email to your database. And you don't have to send it to 500 people in one shot. Maybe do 25 every couple of days and BCC, blind carbon copies, so they don't, uh, yep. you're not sharing everyone's email. And just ask people, are you following my Instagram account, my Facebook page? Uh, your YouTube channel if you have one, and make sure that you also attach the easy to click links that takes people directly to your social media. 
I know you can't really do that on Instagram per se, but you can open Instagram on your desktop computer yep. as well. Yep. And Margaret, how are you doing with that tip? Well, so first of all, uh, we have a, a web designer team in our office and they have a created a digital signature on all my email and it actually has the icon facebook instagram and youtube and it actually embedded the link so people can just click and then go so that's one of the things we and we we did we did this year but the other thing is every time when there is a you know a, a little bit more of a festival like thanksgiving a, a notable holiday i do a little email greeting and then in there i at the bottom i would ask uh, would you follow me here awesome very good yes that's a, a really smart thing to do is to add those icons to your signature in your email and make sure that you then um, attach the link to it yep yeah and awesome. I think yeah, a lot of people nowadays they they wanted to check you out before they see you so the first set of uh, contact probably is through email and if you could have those and and because by the time i see them they're like oh yeah i seen you on on your facebook and you're doing this and this so i know they do check they do they do check you out before they see you i follow you and everything you're doing margaret <laughs> I follow you too. you've become quite a good photographer as well thank you thank you i love it it's, it's my little side hobby Okay, here is tip number 11 that came out on September 11th, and that is why not send your happy customers a link to a Google review mm -hmm. so you can start to build your way up the Google search engine with these reviews. Margaret, have you been doing that too? I don't, I have not do that for Google review, but I have ha asked people to do it on Facebook review. So I sent them the link to Facebook review. Uh, I have clients that are quite tech savvy and they're comfortable leaving review there. I also have clients that are more comfortable with typing it out and just attaching as a PDF. So I have a combination of both. Um, I, for the people that I have sent as a uh, Facebook review, they are more than comfortable leaving a review there, which I thought is great because then I can share that directly to my personal page. Absolutely, and those are really good things to also put on your website. Yeah, yeah. Under testimonials. Um, Facebook did come out with a new tab now, which is found in your inbox, and it's called the recommendation tab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it also has a not recommended tab. So you want to make sure, if you're listening right now, that you check into your recommendations tab and make sure that you customize it in your own language and maybe even add some pictures or a video. I think it's a really nice uh, new feature that Facebook has just introduced to us. Okay, we're moving on. So now we have tip number 12, which is plan to do one video a week. Just oh, so yes. really simple. Margaret, why don't you share with everyone how oh, you- Oh, my November this. business plan in 2018. So every year in November, I always do a business plan for the year after. And last year, November, business plan was I need to do a video once a week. And it has been life changing. It's one of those, you just got to put your mind into it because it's not natural. It's not come up, okay, at least not natural for me. Because I do think there are some people that are just, they're born to do this, right? And they, they just come across <laughs> so charming, so now nice. to me, it is not. And it is a lot of time, it's a lot of effort, but it's one of those things that, it's worth, it's worth spending the time to get yourself to drop that fear and get comfortable with it. And I will tell you most of the things that you see on there that I post, it's like take 15 already. <laughs> I will admit, I will admit it is so hard. It is, I mean, even till now, sometimes I have to do 10 takes, 12 takes, 20 takes. But that's the good thing is if you don't like it, redo it, then post it. And it's one of the it's one of the things that because I know if I don't get on it, I will be out of it. So get on it and just do it and just and you know what the truth is, most people, when you're not less than perfect, they relate you to you better because they see the real you. And I think in this day of day and age, it's authenticity. And if you can portray yourself and put yourself out there and be in the camera, and I'm sure other people feel, oh my gosh, I can never do that. 
But you can, you can, you just have to, you just have to do it. Take 20. Yeah, we hear that all the time. I can't be on camera. I don't like how I sound. Oh, I know. I was one of those, remember? Oh, you know, <laughs> Margaret, the video that you did when you were playing the piano, yeah. OMG, that was phenomenal. Thank At you. your new listing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was so impressed with that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so video, you know, try it. It doesn't mean you're going to accomplish it this month, but as long as you're trying it, you will start getting better and better. And watch what other people are doing. Yeah. And just, you know, dip your toe into the pool. Yes. And try video. It I like to share one little. little you. I like, yes. I like to share one little maybe a hack for people to consider if they're really really scared of doing this. And I learned this from Jerry Holstrom. So I will give him the credit, Jerry yeah. Holstrom from Vancouver. Yeah. And he said, if you're really scared of taking video, every morning set up your phone, set up the tripod, do the video of you making toast. Do it for seven days. Don't post it anywhere, but just. Film yourself doing making toast. If you can do that after seven days, at least you would think it's funny enough that you can drop the video. <laughs> Just making toast. That's great. Oh, I love yeah. Jerry. I you know. Wonder. That's a good tip. Well, I'm going to start using that one myself. Okay, mm -hmm. tip number 13 that came out on September the 13th, which was a Friday this year, by the way. Yes. Um, yeah. That is... What you want to do is you want to try to share a few behind the scenes. Like what's going on with your company, your business? What do you do that it's it's like getting outside of the box of real estate, but not throwing the box away, right? What do you do behind the scenes? What do I do behind the scenes? Oh, oh, lots, lots. Uh, so Dexter Realty actually had a film day. So they actually hire a professional film company to come and do a film day for Dexter, our meeting and this, that. And, and these people are coming in with gear and camera, umbrella, this, lighting, all that excitement, all the commotion, right? So, you know, I just do a, I just got behind the scene and took a little clip and took a little snapshot here and there, watched them go. And, and I posted up as, um, as the Instagram story. And, oh and, and I, I, I put a little sticker, hashtag film day, Dexter film day. And, you know, it is still portraying you as you're working in the office Monday morning. A lot of things is happening, but brings a little lightness to the day and bring and let people into your life just a bit. And I, I think it, it also show more of a real you than just the well, I'm here to present you with a new listing, blah, 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 blah. This house is offered four bedroom. Just just we know we don't function like this all day long. So Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I always say that real estate agents are so more, much more than just the person that lists the house, sells the house and shows the buyers through. You have a life and there's so much involved in being yeah. who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. I love that Dexter did that. Dexter's awesome at doing all those kinds of things. So. Okay, tip number 14. Oh, I love this. Do you know that if you send Catherine and I an email to ask us anything about social media, the first thing that we do is we search you out on the World Wide Web. We have a look at your website, then we head over to your social media. So we get a feel for who you are before we return your call or mm -hmm. your email. So one of the That's things- kind of how I, our client check us out too, I am sure of it. Absolutely. So we suggest that you get a friend or a relative, even in another province, and ask them to look at your website. Yeah. Ask them how friendly your website is and how informative it is and if it was easy for them to maneuver both on a desktop computer and most definitely on your smartphone. Do you know, Margaret, yesterday I phoned a real estate company, a huge real estate company to let them know that their website was not secured. They had the old HTTP web address instead of HTTPS. 
you can believe that thousands of people were not going onto their website because Google was going to say, you are not a secure website. So oh, have someone yeah. check your website out and then have them check your social media out. How yeah. is it looking? How does it feel for them? Do they mm -hmm. like you by what they're seeing? Mm -hmm. Have you done that too, Margaret? I do. The, re the way I do that is I have my phone and then I take my husband's phone. <laughs> And I use his phone to look at my sites. I use his phone to look at how my website, because I just redone all my website. Oh, my website was painful to look at. So it was so dated. And I it was one of my projects last year, November business plan, was to get my new website all done. And it's done. So I actually do check it. And I do found that my opening page was not opening properly and it was not showing up. So I have to go back to my designer, which go back to the server provider and say, okay, there's all these glitches. So it's good to go back and check. And if you haven't done it, then it's okay. You can do it because just look at it from your consumer's point of view and seeing the website for the first time on a new device. Yeah. So I, I audit myself and for my social media, a lot of the time I do hear other people's feedback. Say, oh, yeah, I really like what you're posting. And, and so I hear those feedback and I, I hear those. So I think it's better. I do check it, but I also get feedback. Perfect. Yeah, because we can't grow and change what we don't know. And we're so busy that most times we never even look ourselves at how things are coming across to the consumer. So that's perfect. Okay. So tip on September the 15th was Facebook and Instagram have created several different ways for you to create a multitude of variety when it comes to content on your social media. So are you, Margaret, doing more than exactly the same thing over and over? Uh, I do albums. I upload videos. I do slideshow. I have not tried the carousel, but I I know, I know. It's one of the things. I love them. It will happen. It will happen. Uh, but I have done all of that. And I actually personally really like the slideshow too because they do uh, 10, you can upload 10 images and then you can actually set it back so that it's three seconds on each. So it makes it into a 30 second image and you can actually write things out and you can put uh, transcribe on the side and, and you can do quite a bit. You can even add music. Um, I thought they're fun. They're, and they're easy to put together. Yes, yeah, you just have to have the pictures on your phone yep. or on your desktop computer. Awesome, so yeah, we call them the secret boxes um, when we're teaching the boot camp about all the different ways to create content for your social media and that way you just look like you're having fun. And yeah, and it's not just always templated. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, Margaret, why don't you share with us tip number 16, which is, what are your favorite apps that you're using for your oh, social media? Oh, yes, I did a Snapseed all the way. Snapseed. Wow. So Snapseed, I, I, I think it's like the best thing ever. It, it, it kind of is because it's also free, right? You yeah. can download it. You can use it anytime. It's easy. It's powerful. It's functional. You can learn all the ways and it can be basic, but you can also be really creative. Um, and and it's easy to use. Uh, Does it allow you to put words on your photos? Yes. Yep. Yeah. It allows me to put words. You can do frames. You can put like you can even design somewhat a logo-ish look kind of text. Okay. Uh, you can you can fade something out. You can bring something back. You can actually even uh, so what I did on one picture was I was driving down Granville and it was underneath the Granville Bridge. It was a concrete pillar but if somebody has spray painted um there's life there's nothing to life unless there's love or something like that it's a very inspirational quote yeah. and it was done in bright colors so i was driving i pulled over quickly took a snapshot at that picture and what i did is i turned everything to black and white but bring out the color of that quote no, nice. and, and you can do it Snapseed in seconds. Yes, well, Snapseed was one of the first apps that we started using, owned by Google. Um, mm -hmm. I also love a new app that just came out called Story Swag. Oh, Story Swag. Okay, and it's kind of like using iMovie 
only it's a little more simpler. Yeah. Um, it, it, it helps Ooh, you. I will check that out. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Word swag. I will check that out. Well, word swag has always been my longtime favorite, uh, but story mm -hmm. swag now is another one. And I like Adobe Spark. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, those are the ones that I really use a lot. So Adobe Spark, iMovie. Word yep. swag and now story swag. And yep. I just created a couple of videos on story swag for um, our clients on their real estate. Okay. Now, um, we I also use a uh, Ripple, I think. I oh, yeah. Ripple. Ripple. Yeah, I don't use it much anymore, but I used it years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's one of those. The other thing, the other one that I use is Animoto. Yeah, Animoto is another one that's been around for a while. There's, um, a desktop version only at this time of wave video and quite frankly we have probably done 90 percent of the videos we're doing for our clients for real estate through wave okay. video okay it's just it's simple to use there is a free version of course we we don't have the free version catherine bought the big bang buck as well as canva right canva yeah yeah canva yeah has a free version and a paid version pick monkey I uh, use the monkey get here. Simple. So yeah. those are some of the ones that we use every single day to create our content on social media. Okay, tip number 17. Oh, this is really important. And it's something that we don't really do. This is something that Catherine and I have to do. And that is once a month, mm -hmm. go into your settings tab on all your social media and have a look in the back end and see if any of the templates have changed, the about information has changed, linking other accounts. Just double check that there's not something new there that you're missing. The other thing that I recommend is you have a look on your Facebook business page from a desktop computer at your tabs that are located down the left hand side and make sure that the tabs are there are actually tabs that you need or remove them in your settings. Um, any feedback on that, Margaret? I don't check it once a month, but I do check it. I probably check it once every few months. Um, um, I, I, I know you guys are totally on top of it and you, you're definitely checking, but I, I do found that, yeah, it's good to check and usually nothing huge or dramatic happens, but you know, it's always good to know. We have to check it. It's our business. <laughs> and you also manage a lot more accounts than we do, right? So Yes. Well, and, and because we're teaching it. So we kind of have to have our finger on the pulse of the ever-changing world of social media, the jungle of social media. Okay. So let's talk about tip number 18, Margaret. And I know you do this all the time and that is change up your cover image i love it i have a facebook cover library i wow. I made it into a facebook cover library so i do all my banners in canva and i do that and i input my logo i into input my name uh prague dexter realty and then i save it under a facebook library and every time when there is whether it be thanksgiving fall uh easter christmas you know happy new year i always have one that i can put on even labor day so you know and then you I can add if there is a client event then you can do a little something but other than that uh, i always have a bank of 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 Facebook banners that I can just go in and change it up. Yeah, absolutely. And now you can even have video on yes. your Facebook cover image. So that was tip number 18. We're getting close to the end here. We're on tip number 19. And this one you're also a superstar at, and that's check your video gear list. And tell us a little bit about your gear, Margaret. Uh, well, I have a little tripod, which I, don't have it with me today right here, but that's okay. Uh, so I, I have a tripod, I put, yeah, uh, well, I don't actually have a selfie stick. That's the one thing I don't have. I just I got have, this in the mail. It's pink. <laughs> I know, I know. So I, I have a small tripod just for ease to carry because I do expert interview and um, it's easier to just carry a little small tripod, but I also have a big sturdy one. So I have both. And the other thing that I use is when I have it as a clip-on, then I use ring light. So I have this right here. Nice. 
right. Oh, nice. Super bright. Um, I usually pick a room that is naturally bright anyway. Hey, Margaret, but clip that onto your 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 laptop or over the lens and turn it on. I want to see something. This? The other way. Turn, click it onto your, yeah. Now click it onto the. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. A little bit. A little yeah, bit. It totally yeah. warmed up your face. Yeah, but I found that when I put it on right over the lens, it helps me, it helps my eye draw my eyes towards the lens rather than somewhere else. So yeah, where I'm you're supposed here, to be looking is a very uncomfortable place. To I know. Score. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it helps me and it also helped my expert interviewer guest to look at the lens rather than looking at somewhere else that shouldn't be. So that's one thing I have. The other thing I have is a shutter clicker. Oh, yes. Catherine's favorite, the clicker. Yes, me too. So it's one of those things that you can just hide it underneath the table and it will go on and off as you command rather than stick your hand and your arms out to go press on or off. Right. And then you have to do some editing when you do that. How much did you pay for your clicker? 20. Actually, it comes It this that the ring light and the clicker comes as a set. Wow. Yeah, it comes as a set. It comes as a set with a little pouch. Yeah, I love the little pouches, the velvet pouches. Yes, that's right. Uh, I always have a um, lens cleaner. So you need to make sure that your lens is always clean. Yeah, right here. I always do a little clean before I do any video. It helps. Um, the other one that I use is my right here a little mic yeah so, sorry Please so you just that. flip it on you you clip it on right here uh the it box. just picks your voice a lot better i found that uh so i would plug this in onto the phone and then i'll just talk into the mic um and what i also have is if i'm having two people at the same time so let's say myself and uh, another expert that i'm interviewing i would have a splitter it would look like that. Yeah. So this end goes to the phone, and um, and then I'll plug the the microphone. So Margaret, the... tell me when you say if you have someone else doing the video with you, what are you talking about? Oh, it could be. So I do a, a series of expert interview, and I had had photographer like our a home architectural for a photographer. I I on Monday I'm doing a series on with inter inspection inspectors and i have oh, wow. one that is uh I, i'm hoping to get an rcmp officer to come and talk about home security and uh, i'm also talk i have done one with a real estate investor so you know just different variety of topics just uh, hoping to bring the value of information to a homeowner to a consumer mm -hmm. and then so now you have a library of these yeah. shows on your facebook are you also uploading them to youtube Yep, I have a YouTube channel, uh, Instagram, Facebook, as well as my website. Good girl, and you could embed those videos from YouTube onto your website as a blog. That's right, yeah, I have my blog. I don't call it a blog, I call it Our Stories. I love it. Yeah, Good, our stories. Good girl. Yeah. Okay, well, we are on our social tip for the month of September the 20th, which is today, Friday the 20th. It's my sister's birthday. Michelle, happy birthday if you're listening. Happy and birthday, you Michelle. Want, yeah. You want to measure your performance. You will never be able to get better if you don't understand if it's working or if it's not working. You must have a pixel on your website today in order to help Facebook help you. Mm -hmm. As well as you have a few measurements that Facebook and Instagram give you, such as your insight yeah, tab, insight. that yeah. tells you how well everything is working. And Margaret, how do you like measuring your success on social media? Uh, I have not. <laughs> not much anyway. Um, I have, I th when I was looking at this, uh, tip this morning at nine o'clock. I'm thinking, yeah, that's right. I should tell my designer to put a pixel on my website so I can oh. embed it into Facebook to help it. Because my website just finished. Just good girl. Good for you. We have a video on the pixel. 
Oh, okay. So I'll go and check it out and learn yeah, it. For sure. Um, yeah. And, you know, a lot of people measure their success with their likes and their comments. It's not necessary. Yeah. No, you want to measure your success by the clicks away from Facebook to your website yeah. where your products and services are. You want to check your Google Analytics and mm -hmm. you want to look at what people are doing when they're on your website so you know what they like. And yeah. then you want to, of course, look at who they are so you can create content that actually speaks to who them. those people are. And I, actually, I do found that people fall in maybe misunderstanding when they're thinking, oh, what I'm, I, I need to create content that people would like to. But I found that and this is actually from over the long time. I've been pretty consistent about what I post and what I don't post. And I have people, clients, friends, they tell me, oh yeah, you post really good stuff. And then I'm thinking, I never see your engagement. I, they, 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 they follow me, but they never do anything. They don't even click like, but they know exactly what's going on. So I think, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you can't just measure by seeing how many likes you get. It, it could be a little misleading. Well, we have a client that really needed some good um, statistics to share with their seller for their listing. Mm -hmm. And um, their actual post on Facebook had very little engagement. Nobody was saying anything. But when right. they opened the analytics up, wow, they had 80 clicks to their website in two days, nice. as well as we could see all of the other clicks when they were looking at all of the other photos as well. Right. So right. measuring, because that sure made us feel better. It made them as the listing agent feel better for sharing yeah. that content with their seller. Um, yeah, so we need to measure to get better and to keep learning. So that, Margaret, are our 20 tips. We're up to date. It is September 20th. This is the September challenge. Our guest today on social tips was Margaret Wong. Margaret is with Dexter Realty. And I'm going to put all Margaret's um, links for you to click and follow Margaret and to see how she's doing and support her and engage with her content on social media. And we really hope that um, the September challenge is helping you with your social media. You know, Catherine and I have over 500 YouTube videos on social mm -hmm. media. And mm -hmm. if you are stuck on anything, please reach out and ask for help and be a ninja like Margaret and keep learning because things are never going to stop changing. Oh, I know. But I also found that the YouTube that you, or the videos that you and Catherine created, it's really easy to follow. You just, it's at a good pace and it's just so, it flows really well. So you just keep watching it and you do it one by one. And, and actually I have it screen by screen. So I have two screen on, so I have one that's your wow. video and then I have one on Facebook. So I would actually follow and oh, do that. So yeah, so that, that way I found that once I do it two times, I get it, I understand. Awesome. Well, Margaret, it is really nice to see you. <laughs> it's not like in person, but it is in person. Um, you are an absolute pleasure. Your time is valuable. We appreciate it. And I hope you have a spectacular weekend. You too. Thank you, Heather. Always glad to be here. Thank you for inviting. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye, everyone. Keep it simple.